Hey there Trailblazers, hope you are doing good and good to see you again. In the video we are going to talk about the fifth and final design pattern which is bulk state transition. Bulk state transition design pattern is uh, used to perform the bulk action efficiently. It could be your bulk DML. That is what we are going to control over here. You might have also used the trigger handlers. You might use a uh, trigger framework or you might be using the concept of handler and service classes. And that is nothing that is basically the bulk state transition. So let's quickly implement this bulk state transition. Here what we are going to do is we are going to start with the problem which you might see that this is a very basic problem class uh, level 1 problem that we are going to implement here first and then we will convert that problem with the help of our bulk state transition pattern. So we are going to create a class over here or uh, instead of class let's quickly going to create a trigger over here I am going to create a, a trigger named cases trigger okay. I'm sorry, I need to create a trigger, not class. So I'll name as uh, cases trigger, okay? And on which object we wanted to create on case, let's quickly talk about the use case first, which we are going to implement. And now let's say that you are uh, working as a developer for a company and your client requirement is if the case subject contains any of the keywords. Now what keywords let's say that SSN or uh, let's say that uh, credit card or debit card okay or it could be Aadhaar or let's say that passport if your subject contains any of these keywords you need to create another child case under the same case saying that uh, your subject contains any of these keywords defined in the description. Okay, that is basically the simple use case we are going to implement here. Now, as our use case says that we need to create a child trigger, not child trigger, we need to create a child case under that parent case. So our operation will be after insert. In case of only insert operation we want. Okay. Now here what we will do is um, usually what people do is okay, let's go ahead and use a for loop. I hope everyone is aware about um, working with the for loops and uh, what is that trigger dot new and how it does work so we'll say that okay just go ahead and uh, iterate with trigger dot new and all the records which will be there and then here what we are going to see is we are going to say okay if c dot subject okay first thing make sure subject is not blank so we'll say that okay testing dot is blank so if not a string dot is blank the subject okay the subject is not blank that means there is something and then we will say that and subject dot contains now what it does contains it could be anything right ssn credit card debit card or passport okay so we have to put the condition over here like ssn and all other conditions should be put inside or if any of the keyword is there in the subject we are going to create the child case so now here what we are doing we have just check if the subject is not blank okay and then subject is containing any of these keywords whatever we have defined over here on the top as per requirement now what we will do is we'll say okay if that is being the case let's quickly create a new case and here under new case what we will uh, say is new case dot subject and here we will say subject what we will say that your case contains any of the given keyword in the description okay this is our subject now description is we will say that please verify or you can say so we are saying the description as your parent case contains either credit card uh, like SSN credit card debit card or passport and then we can say okay status is uh, open uh, priority is high and then yeah these are the things that we actually wanted to have and then what we usually do we go ahead and say that okay insert new case okay this is working and now it's working fine now if, if we wanted to test it we can go ahead and quickly test it so for testing this what we will do is let's quickly go ahead and create an apex class and name it as the case trigger test and i'm going to 
copy this case over here let's quickly have first thing we need to make sure that this class is annotated with at the red test is test okay and then here what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a private method private static void let's say that uh, case insert test that is the name of our method and in our subject let's quickly say ssn okay description i'm just putting something description okay example description and here before we actually test this there is something we need we forget here we need to say a new case dot parent id okay we'll say that parent id equal to c dot id so that our case will always be inside the parent case which has been just created over here now what we are we have done is we just deployed the code get back to our test class now here the case is inserted our trigger will run it will insert one more case so what i am going to do over here is to verify let's quickly create a query over here socal query and put uh, the sum information over here so that select id case number from case where not where i'm just going to do this like this and then i'm going to say system dot assert equals okay and then expected is going to be two and then actual is case list dot size okay and then also we can add message and we can say that uh, uh, there are uh, two case in, cases in the system so now what we are doing here is we are saying okay uh, go ahead insert the case as soon as the case is inserted trigger is going to run and when the trigger is running then the case is basically going to uh, another case is going to create it so that is what we are checking over here one asset is this and then what we will do is let's go ahead and deploy this so now what we will do is we are going to run this test class and once this test class is run we are going to see either the assertion is uh, like this assert is uh, passing successfully or not okay so let's go ahead and click on run all test if you don't see this uh, run all test button over here in the visual force uh, like vs code you can just use this class name or you can just go to your browser and run the test from home, from there i'm just assuming you know how to run the test or i'm going to show you the like i'm going to run the test from the browser itself so i've just opened the class which is case trigger test and then i'm going to use this button run test and then we will see add test method here okay that's why we are getting there okay we forget one thing in our test case what we need to do is we need to say okay our test method must be annotated with is at the red test that i forgot to implement over here and that's why we got that error in the browser right now the deployment is done now we can just go ahead and click on run all test over here from the vs code itself or you can just run from the browser anywhere is fine we just need to say or we just need to see if the test is passing successfully or not you can see here like test is passing successfully that's fine our assets are not failing we are able to see okay that's fine for one record it's fine now consider a scenario where you are importing the records with a data loader you are importing a record uh, say that uh, uh, from some other system it could be middleware which is uh, feeding the data to your case object so how you will do that let's quickly modify this now i'm going to create a list of cases over here right and we'll say that case to insert and what i'll do is i'm going to insert let's quickly say i'm going to have a for loop in t0 equal to zero okay and i is less than let's say 200 cases we are inserting and we are just going to copy the code from here and put inside the for loop and then here for description i'm going to also append i and uh, i'm also going to remove some from the yeah, okay i'm going to remove few things and we'll say i and then this is something i dot two strings a species activity something like that okay and then we'll say case dot case to insert and then we are going to add this new case in the list and then we are going to insert this new case over here now now what we are doing is we are saying okay go ahead insert 200 cases 
at a time here we are inserting 200 cases okay we got some error here so that's fine you can just go ahead deploy it again by removing that twisting method okay now we are saying go ahead and insert 200 reports now what is what what this query is expecting now what we are expecting here from this query we are expecting that if we are inserting 200 case records then we are expecting that it should return extra 200 because for every case we are returning 200 so we'll say that it is now going to be instead of 200 it should be 400 okay now we are saying okay 400 and uh, the list that we are getting over here after making the changes again we also need to make the changes in the assert message which will display if the assert will fail now we are just deploying the changes we deployed over here clear the console and then again run your test this time let's see what will happen i'm not going to say anything for this we'll see either some error or might be some success and then we'll talk about why it is happening so now you can see here we have got some error you know what error it is then saying in our class which is our test class the method which is test case method outcome is fail and there is a message which is uh, saying this is the message if you are not able to see let me quickly put it over here by copying and pasting so you will see this error okay you are seeing this error system.dml uh, like limit exception too many dml statements right now what is happening it says that 151 that means we can only make a dml 150 dml in a single transaction but we are making more than 150 right that's why we have inserted 200 records over here now this is the problem that we can or that we can say is our bulk state transition framework solved now to solve this what we will do is again we'll get back to our trigger and we'll say that okay list of case and we can say child case to insert and then here instead of inserting here inside for loop because that with the help of best practice we don't need to insert so we'll say that okay add and then it is going to say new case and then outside of our for loop this is the one then we are going to insert our child cases to insert this is what we are going to insert and we are going to deploy now we are deploying this once this is deployed we can again get back to our test case test class and we can just execute the test cases to see this time if the test assert is falling uh, like passing successfully or not so go ahead and run your test cases now you can see here our test cases is passing successfully with the bulk record that is what the name itself says that bulk state transition so we need to work with this way now there is still some we can say changes that we need to have some changes we need because we are having all the code over here inside our trigger which is not a best practice even the bulk state transition uh, doesn't say that put all the code inside your trigger so what you have to do is you have to create a trigger handler and that trigger handler will have all these code so now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create one more class and we'll say that cases this is the name of our class cases okay now here inside this class we can have okay we can have a method public void state uh, like a static void and we'll say that handle after insert and whatever the code we have let's quickly copy and paste it there okay paste it here now one thing you might be here this trigger dot new okay this is a supported definitely it's supported but as a best practice what we do is we say okay let's accept one parameter okay we can say new case or we can say new records and then instead of trigger dot new we will use this new records over here and this we are going to get from our trigger now we have just let's go ahead and deploy this and then here what we will do in our trigger we'll say okay go ahead cases dot handle after insert and for new record because that is basically accepting a parameter we'll say that trigger dot new so by doing this what will happen in near future if you have some requirement to perform some action before insert or perform some action before update or after update then you can easily have those method over here you can easily have the method like public static void handle before update like or before insert 
and you can just perform the logic that you want and then you just go ahead deploy this add the event over here in your trigger before insert then have a condition over here you can say if trigger dot is before that means it is a before insert else if trigger dot is after that means is after insert because we are only having this before and after insert event at the trigger level otherwise you could also be have like uh, you can have more like right? more uh, we can say specific to the events how we can get we we can say okay and trigger dot is insert both things we can put it over here now it will say before insert after insert then only call this okay we will go ahead and deploy this now we what we did we first taken a simple problem okay we got error uh, incorrect signature okay here we don't need to pass any parameter in case of before insert and deploy it now what we did we solved a very basic label problem then we saw what could be the problem then we basically converted that into the semi bulk state transition and then after we use the handler class to make the changes now if at the final demo if you go there in your test class run all the test cases you will still see that all the cases are there which are working fine you can also have one more assert over here in the meantime this is running fine i can say list case and let's say that child case okay and here we can just have a query and we'll say where parent id is not equal to null okay because we are inserting child cases there and then we can have an assert over here child case list total record should be 200 and this message should also be there are 200 child cases in the system okay now before we go ahead and deploy this you can easily see in the console in the output we are able to see our test cases we are passing successfully now you can go ahead and deploy the test case again because we wanted to also test if the child cases are getting inserted or not so we are getting specific to those cases and then again we will run all the tests so you can easily see here you can uh, our case is successfully passing and we are able to make it work now if you go there and you make it as uh, 400 or 500 it is going to work as per your use case or as per whatever you are if you are making changes number of records over here then you also need to make the changes over here as well so this is the bulk state tra transition framework or uh, not framework the pattern and the fifth pattern of our apex design pattern series if you have any questions please feel free to reach out to me thank you